Uh, I'm Marcus Feldman. Uh, I'm part of the education technology team, uh, but I've also been involved in this particular project, um, separate to my role as part of the education technology team, um, uh, creating, a, uh, creating an archive in a school, in a primary school. This is a, it will be the first one that's been, uh, well, it is the first one that's been archon registered in a state primary school. So it's really quite a, a pioneering project um, to see how we can use archives to inspire learning in schools. <coughs> so we're using a range of technologies um, throughout, including uh, interviewing, and the, and the children are very adept. You can see they're very good there, engaging that uh, parent to interview, uh, learning a lot of stuff around that, uh, and they're able to edit and um, document these very effectively themselves. This is year five, so they're 10 year olds. Um, but every single child in school have had an opportunity to do interviewing by the end of this, uh, by the end of this project. Um, green screening has been fantastic as well. We've been using a lot of that to place people into pictures. And this, this uh, little girl here, the Jubilee last year, um, uh, was, uh, uh, had problems uh, saying anything or doing anything in the classroom. But the green screen was really useful because she could see herself as a screen in front of her and see what, what, what's going on. Um, and she actually volunteered there to be the queen for the day, which is fantastic, a great result. Um, we use a whole range of, I mean, this is, a, this is again tying in with other sorts of things we're using. This is more traditional uh, uh, glue and paper, um, looking at what it means to be a hero. But I was tied in with interviews then with, with um, parents and other local community people. Um, and of course, visits as well, uh, at the seaside. Um, we went to Western Super Mayor with Year 1 and 2 and with parents, which was a huge success, although it was very wet, uh, as you might imagine. <laughs> but the important thing is always to tie back to um, the archives for this project. So uh, these are some of the archives. Um, there's a whole range of stuff that we, we managed to pick up at Birmingham Archives and Heritage. But we're also creating and developing archives in the schools so they're better represented uh, in the school themselves, the parents and, and the, the children. And then also, in the longer term, they're more engaged with their learning. And the teachers are starting to use these resources more and going into the archives because they're properly catalogued and they can find the stuff they need to use. Um, it really is becoming a, a really useful resource. I mean, it's, I've been working there for five years in total, doing a range of different projects, and as, as has um, Birmingham Archives and Heritage. The last two years have been creating this archive. So it's taken a long time to build up that trust with the parents and with the um, uh, uh, staff. To, um, to take a risk and try these things out. And this, is, this is a brief example of the catalogue. It's a standard catalogue system. Actually, this one is, there's four people on there at the same time, um, which has been really good. This is Google, Google uh, spreadsheet. Um, so actually, uh, while they've been a group of them cataloguing, they've been encouraging each other to, um, to put more things into the catalogue. There's a slight risk occasionally gets little things appearing in the catalogue, but generally they, they really respond very well to being given the responsibility to be developing their own archives, and, and, it, and it has made a big difference. Um, I think the next one, here we are. The first archive after school club, I think, um, it, which is um, oversubscribed. Uh, we have people queuing up to join, join in to get into the archive room. It looks a lot better nice than that now. So that was before it was, um, they also designed the archive room with um, support from the rep. Um, they've worked with all sorts of um, exciting partners for this project. And I think the important thing is, you know, it is about how do you feel when you first saw your name in print? It's a real buzz for them to, to be a part, actually in the school, represented properly. And it's all tied in with a whole range of social media stuff that we're doing as well. So it's going out to a much wider audience. And people are responding to it as well. They get comments coming in from their blogs. Um, for um, uh, PAG Olympics, we had um, over 100 uh, entries, I think. Uh, they just really got carried away with it um, uh, in terms of, you know, it's totally in their own time. Uh, part, well, partly in their own time, partly as part of the project, um, creating these posts, um, which I can't show you actually, but anyway. Um, so moving on, um, how did the time of my work at um, uh, med school? Um, uh, I think archives are a really uh, useful way of, of engaging people. Um, I think in peer-to-peer -peer learning, in terms of getting people together and, and focusing on uh, around things, um, engaging them in terms of it's their material, they take a lot more ownership of what's going on. And there's a lot more potential for um, uh, getting people excited about the learning they're doing. Developing teamwork. Obviously, if you're contributing to a, a source of information, uh, it, it requires a lot of teamwork, personal value and worth we've talked about before. Um, it's, it is very much about 
encouraging people to share knowledge and value, value each other's contributions. So I think these are skills which go right up through primary school, right through the whole, hopefully will go right through their education system. And of course networking as well. You're, you're starting to develop, thinking, getting them thinking about how do I, uh, uh, how do we meet up with, the, with these people and, and work, work things out. Both within the school, we have our kids meet as well, which is sort of development from teach meet. I don't know if any of you have come across that. Uh, bringing in uh, groups of children from other schools to talk about their work they're doing and, and, um, and what, they're, what they're doing. Um, documenting is something I, I feel like uh, a whole load, of, uh, in terms of archiving, uh, developing those sort of skills to understand why you're documenting something and what stuff you need to ditch as well. Because there are times you can't sort everything in an archive and that's right from very early on, they're, they're, they're getting to understand that. And also in terms of assessing knowledge, categorising it, putting keywords in there, thinking about how these things fit together. Very important skills. Um, again, in terms of Bloom's taxonomy, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar. Um, it's moving on from that uh, understanding and uh, the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy into the more analysis and representation, thinking about that in a very uh, concrete, real example. Um, so, um, I think effective file management is certainly something that's um, uh, We've had to work around and uh, think about how, how we're going to store the catalogues, how it can work with a range of very mixed ability um, uh, people from parents right through to year two, um, so five, five six year olds. Um, so it requires a lot of thought into how you're going to present this stuff and how you're going to catalogue it and how it's going to work together. That, uh, what I didn't show as well is a website as well, which uh, is more easy to manage, work your way through, uh, that's linked to the catalogue. Um, first aid peer to peer, when a presentation a while ago I saw, I was very excited to see um, uh, a very successful uh, use of peer to peer learning. I'm sure it does go in a lot, uh, go, go happen a lot around in this school as well. But I thought that was a particularly good example of working around a, a base of knowledge that, uh, that students are teaching each other uh, and a system that's fairly well developed. Um, clinical skills procedures up in there as well, because I do feel like this. Um, uh, managing a resource, managing a, a, a piece of information, be it teaching resources, research, or whatever it is, uh, very useful skills and possibly something that uh, can, uh, some of the tools and some of the methods could apply to that particular project which I'm working with on, uh, with David Morley and uh, Pete. Um, more effective distance learning. A lot of this stuff, the parents, the children, um, there is the, the archive is in the school, which makes a huge difference, the actual repository items are, but a lot of it is virtual, a lot of it is photography and sound recordings, uh, and, and how, how, how you um, use that in the classroom, or how you, how potentially in the future, we haven't really done this yet, it can become homework, it can be stuff that happens at, at home. Um, how that can happen is something that I think will be quite exciting. Um, the use of social media tools, blogging, all, the, all the understanding of how these things work and how they can be used. You know, the children are totally understanding of that. Uh, totally comfortable with their photos being taken, and the parents are too, actually. There's no real issue. Um, and now the problem isn't, have we got consent for a photo to go up in, uh, on, a, on a particular thing? It's, I want my photo to go up on this site. So it's, it, it has really sort of, and there is a real understanding of where it's going and what it's being used for, and that's why I think we've got the confidence of the parents and the children. End of WebCT. I don't really know what's happening to all these huge resources, and, and I, I guess uh, if there is a policy about it, or whether it's being worked out individually, but I, I do feel like some sort of archiving approach to that would be really useful, um, because potentially there's a lot of information, some of it we don't want, and some of it we do want, and I'm not clear, but maybe you know, other people are more clear on that, I don't know, uh, on what is going to be kept and what is going to be ditched. And I feel like some sort of archiving approach to it might be a really useful approach, not just to research, obviously research I think is more uh, safely uh, controlled, but I think also in terms, of, in, in terms of teaching and learning resources, which I think feels, I feel like sometimes gets left behind a bit. Um, so, oh, and then the last one, history of medicine. Um, I, I went to a presentation um, a little while ago, um, and I think it's really fascinating and a really good insight to how things are developing, to understand where you've come from. Uh, and to keep an archive um, of not just the, uh, the, the um, research, but also the, the way uh, teaching is happening, will be a very useful tool for analysis and a whole range of other things in the future. Oh, that's some um, uh, wiki comments. That's a. I'll stick it by that one. 
Um, so just in summary, I'll end with Albert Einstein. Um, you know, it's really important uh, that you're valuing um, uh, the experiences of other people, and I think it sets it's setting these children up for a far more, um, uh, in terms of their learning experience, far uh, far. Uh, I'm getting tongue twisted. I thought I got that for a bit. Um, uh, yeah, sharing your knowledge and experiences. Um, more people are likely to share with you, and, and it's developing that culture of learning, uh, which I think is really important. That hopefully they'll take with them through their um, uh, through their lives, lifelong learning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcus.